spring season. We are here uh, watching and uh, commentating a Swiss tournament with 32 players who got qualified. Only top 16 will go to tomorrow. $20,000 prize pool. This is round five. A round that uh, matters a lot. I'm here with Lothar and Raven. My name is Nimsch. Guys, who are we going to see next? Who's playing? So we're going to see the Fishu versus Tracker style first. So that's going to be a, a good matchup. And th this is an elimination game, I believe. Th this is an elimination game. Yeah. Uh, because every like when we are choosing uh, which matches to show, uh, it's of course cool to see Ties battling Moody for for like the 4-0, right? But uh, um, that this doesn't really change anything of the outcomes of the players that will go to day two. So we thought. Maybe it's better to just show the players that are on brink of elimination or just having that, you know, happy, happy expression of their face because, yes, Qualified. I got <laughs> the day too. So we here we are here we are with the Fishu and Tracker Style that will be playing for their life and death. Absolutely. Really. And then we know uh, some stuff about the Fishu. So Lothar, what do you yeah. know about him? Well, I remember him um, with his first international appearance uh, that was back in the... Uh, how, what was the name? Those were, uh, you were pretty European young at the time. It was uh, one <laughs> year ago. <laughs> yeah, that, that was basically European Championships. Uh, for in the Sweden, yeah. In Sweden, that was the f uh, qualifier for uh, for the World Championships yeah. for f from Europe, uh, and that would that broadcast actually lasted till six a.m. Uh, our time, European time. So it was quite 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 ridiculous. But the Fisher was playing. Um, a tempo mage, yeah, very aggressive correctly. one, very aggressive one with arc and missiles, and he uh, was battling against life coach. He won. Uh, was quite life coach was devast devastated after after that loss, and um, that was the first appearance of the Fisher. He kind of made the splash right um, right there. So I remember him as the guy who brought the tempo mage, um, even though it wasn't really favored in the meta game back then. All right, and Tracky style, Raven. Do we know about anything about him? Yeah, we don't know a lot, to be honest, at all. And I think the, uh, it's important to focus on what this type of tournament and what the tournaments throughout the year are going to showcase. And is that you know anyone can qualify. You know, if you're good enough, like he's gone through the qualifiers just like everyone else, like the big names, like Tyus mm -hmm. Powder, so on. And you know, he's here, and if he wins this game, he's through to tomorrow. So definitely, as we were speaking about earlier, you know, this is a tournament where you can make a name for yourself if you want it uh, badly enough. So we'll see what he can do. Absolutely, and also winning versus. The Fischl, one of the best French players. I, r I recognize the Fischl. Like, obviously, I, I know what you said also, uh, but uh, I've played versus him in the final of the Millennium House Cup 2, mm -hmm. and uh, he had a really cool and innovative at the time Defrattle, Defrattle deck, Defrattle Hunter. So I uh, connected him mostly to the Defrattle Hunter, but he can play any deck, and he's also, uh, he qualified for the prelim um, this year, and he didn't make it to the top eight, but he's one of those guys who's always there just waiting for his chance to win a tournament. And he actually won the Millennium House Cup too. Uh, and there was Savitz and Amas playing and uh, a lot of great players. Yeah, really interesting as well. We just saw the Twitch chat uh, predictions for this match and it's actually 52% for the Fisher versus 48. Bulk so chat. that's actually really clo like close than I'd expect as well because like, as we just said, we don't know too much about track style. But interest as well, they both brought Shaman, Harston, which is good. Hearthstone wise, Hearthstone wise, that's a what? good matchup, <laughs> right? Harston wise that's a good matchup. 50 yeah. Fifty percent. Yeah. It's pretty pretty fair. Yeah. Any deck above fifty percent is pretty good. So. Yeah, it's not conflict anymore. Oh <laughs> my god, two aggro decks are now battling against each other. Wait, what? That's a shaman with Yeah, so um this was a this was a version Chaki was playing. Actually, oh, or at least, okay. or at least, Chucky yeah, played yeah, yeah. a version with Dr. Boom in, and it had things like uh, Flame Tongue Totem in as well, which hasn't seemed uh, too common in the aggro shamans we've seen for you know recently. But Chucky actually said he reviewed uh, in his warm up for the NA prelims, he actually went win rate of cards in the deck, and he said that Flame Tongue Totem was the highest win rate card in the whole deck, and he tested a lot of different cards. So that's very interesting. Yeah, really interested to see how uh, how if this is the same deck and how well it performs well, overall. I, I think the deck was kind of known uh, because. Like we've seen most of the deck when he was uh, when Chucky was playing, and he was even able to turn around the matchup where he was losing. Uh, he was able still to win it on the back of that flame tongue totem, I believe. So. Oh yeah, yeah, it was insane. He pushed so much damage early on. I think it was versus Freeze Mage as well, where the uh, the damage was just too much. But looking at this game, you know, another interesting deck is Trackstyle bringing Agro Paladin, which is pretty cool, and the start of double Lepinome is pretty reasonable as well. You're a fan of Agro Paladin Raven, right? Like you've played it a lot. Yeah, I uh, probably like a, a month or so ago. I played the deck quite a lot. It was actually Game King's deck, so uh, and he and he's here, so uh, he made the deck, I believe. So really good deck and something a bit different, especially when everyone's expecting secrets, right? What so just happened? 
So he mm -hmm. attacked face with the no, he attacked with the leper gnome into the totem golem. The yeah. totem golem, and for he should have no reason. Yeah, and he should go for face. Uh, I think he was setting up consecrate next turn, um, so we can clear anything that comes out. Because even if a feral spirit came out yeah, next but turn, healing he totem would have been devastating here. Yeah, that's true. He could still consecrate and then run run the one one in. But you lose two damage. In yeah. The process. Yeah, but then on the other hand, it was kind of like baiting your opponent, right? It's like, oh, I, I attack on by mistake, so now <laughs> we can... Well, I think the payout is a Feral Spirit is definitely one of those problematic cards for a lot of aggro decks because the three health is really difficult to get through. But you set up two one-attack minions and uh, and the Consecrate to be able to just push through that and then carry on. Still have two tokens left from the Creeper and the 1-1 one -one from the uh, you know the Divine Shield just that gets knocked off. So I don't mind that play too much. I think we're looking at a pretty even game, although definitely look at Trackstar getting there ahead on the board here. Do you guys agree this matchup is... Um Good for shaman. Like, if I don't think so, actually. If there is an, a paladin which is not an aggro paladin, it is mostly good for shaman. But uh, versus aggro paladin, it changes a lot, right? The problem is here that um, this this shaman probably doesn't play any kind of sweepers, right? There, are, there will be no elemental destruction. There will be no lightning storm, and those cards would have been MVP here yep. in this situation. Exactly in this situation, right? Even though they are not cleaning up the the board, they are doing a lot of damage and are preserving the life totals. Yeah, they're, the they're doing enough, player. right? Yes, and, uh, you exactly. know, like the second you reduce, I mean, imagine this board where it's just a 2-2 two, two and 2-1-1s, two, one, and that's it. That's that's pretty okay. But the problem now is because uh, he's, he's sort of mana locked, he might be forced into a, a lava shock just to free up some more of that mana and see what he can do with the rest here. Yeah, the, also he needs to throw away cards from hand because a, a possible divine favor will just replenish uh, Paladin's hand. So it is, oh, Fire Blast is ni quite nice. Yeah, I think Fire Blast, Fire Blast is probably the best here because he isn't in a position to push. If he was leading, then maybe Steady Shot. Now, Steady Shot's the normal go-to uh, with this deck. You know, you just push for more consistent damage every single turn instead of just rolling for totems. But uh, I, I like the ping here because it just deals with so many of the, the low minions. That's why I think like this matchup overall is very good for Shaman because if Shaman is in the lead, Shaman just wins and that's it. Like This is a situation where Shaman is behind from the very first turns. Yeah, um, I think the, um, the difference is really uh, the Paladin... Uh, especially late game really requires the board to win um, because they don't really have the like the, the you know the mega burst that the, the shaman have and uh, this is going to be the you know one of the benefits of dropping Doctor Boom he is a little bit you know pushed for a little bit pressured but Doctor Boom is definitely one of those cards that can deal with a lot of stuff. I like this as well. Yeah. Just hit him in the face. Hope yep. there is no taunt or anything else. But oh, he has the owl as well. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man, so the Fishu will have to clear this board. And be able to set up those uh, for our spirit. Hmm. Yeah, we might even see some like a lava burst on the five-five, uh, the feral spirit, and then well, double lightning bolt. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, Dude. well, in all seriousness, like the problem you've got is the the weapon actually deals with the feral spirit straight away. So you know, you need to understand that you will lose one of your taunts no matter what next turn. So uh, I think you see what the bombs do, and then probably like. Lava burst to 5-5, five, five, depending on where these land. That kind of sucks. I would probably want like to kill the 5-5. Five, five, yeah. Oh, wow, that's nice. Ping doing some work. But you still go for the clears, I believe. On the other hand, it's really hard to ignore 7 damage to face. Especially if you hope that this will stop the damage. I wouldn't even mind like double lightning bolt, to be yeah. honest, on the minions and Absolutely. go face with it. Because you're still gaining extra damage from boom. Um, uh, and it's just reducing so much extra damage okay. there. Yeah, that's um, that's a good and proper move to use the lightning bolt here, and then maybe even the second one, maybe even uh, the rock biter to clear everything, just to deny possibility of another blessing of kings. Yeah. An example, right? Because the problem is as well, especially with the paladin heal, uh, so he won't take any damage. He hasn't quite got lethal, but he is holding on because if he draws one <laughs> more burn spell, now, by the way, Look never mind. Blessing <laughs> of kings just showed up. Yeah. Yeah, it's the second one as well. And by the way, the Fishu, the Fishu didn't use the Lightning Bolt right there because he had lethal on board. If uh, one of the wolves would die, the spiders would not kill the second wolf. That was enough damage in hand and on board to just finish the ballot next turn. So he just made a play to, to, to win next turn, but, mm -hmm. well, unfortunately for him, Blessing of Kings. Yep. Yep. So, uh, yeah. But there were a lot of outs, right? Because, no, wait, he needed actually four damage. So there, were, there was not a lot of outs. It depends what's in his deck. Leroy, Leroy is a possibility, like absolutely. Divine favor would help a lot, a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Could keeper, keeper would not be enough, because keeper would be just uh, plus two. Yeah, yeah, just plus two damage. 
But this oh. is a uh, this is kind of nice, and we saw the sort of the difference running that consecrate makes. Because although it wasn't like consecrating down a big board, he managed to clear off the board whilst guarding, you know, like a lot of his. And as we said, uh, as you said, Lothar, the, the Shaman doesn't look like he's running any AoE. And, the, the, you know, in this matchup, you get behind and it's just too much unless the Shaman can actually just draw like a ridiculous But this burst. was actually super close. Like if you would get a Haunted Creeper off the top or Knife Juggler even, that one knife would not do much. Fishu had lethal in his hand. Like look at that. He had... Basically, 11 plus Dr. Boom and a wolf is 9. He hits 20 yeah, damage. 16, 16. And, and also, yeah. even if he was just off, then like the odds on you drawing direct damage with, with that Shaman deck are oh, so, are so high. high. Yeah. Like, it's so high. You just presume you're going to draw it because there's more chance that you actually won't. But when you think about it now, the fact that he missed the attack with the Leper Gnome, right, was really a huge factor because his only out were, was, we assume, the Blessing of Kings, if that damage would have gone to the face. Yeah, there's a few more. That's, uh, that's adding Gog Hammer, that's adding Consecration, yeah. that's a um, Abusive Surgeon. Blessing of Might. Blessing of Might, yes. Then all of those are out, so you change from, from like one out to six. Yep. Maybe even more, because Argent Horse Rider is still there. Yeah, yeah true. Them. Another one. Okay, but this time it's going to be Patron Warrior versus... Most likely. Well, Corcrans are most likely Patron and <laughs> also Fishers. <laughs> Double Armor Smiths an opening deck. Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah, what, so what do you guys think about uh, the Corcron and Patron versus some of the other choices that I you have? Honestly, I don't like it that much. Uh, I prefer having um, Pilot Shredder, but then Fisher is, is more of an aggressive card. It's like, Corcron is not bad. There are cards that you can easily deal with, like uh, Imp Gang Boss, you can kill it, attack into it immediately, and then finish something off. It gives you a bit more burst, because su suddenly you have Corcron with Enrage, a 6 uh, with charge, so having more charges. Mm -hmm. But... Um, when I was on when I was playing the, that version, I didn't like it because I'm more mid range centric. I think it's a more of a personal choice and yeah. preference. Lothar, have you tested the Corcrons? Yeah, I mean I like Corcrons because they're proactive, and what warriors usually uh, lousy at is being proactive yeah. on the board, right? Because you rely so much on on weapons to have the tempest weapons, right? So Corcron is. A great answer to some minions, to and it's great against Azure Drakes if they are very popular in the meta, and they are currently very popular. So uh, I, I see think it's nice. It's flexible, right, as well, because yes. it's uh, sometimes you just call Crom face and say, "Deal with my four three, yeah, you know, and exactly. like, and that you know something that patrons struggle with sometimes is actually just pushing for that extra bit more mm -hmm. damage to do like Agreed. a Grom combo. So uh, I, again, I, I completely agree. It's complete uh, preference. But looking at this game now, double death by and war axe might be a bit overkill. Um, on the weapons, but with the armor smiths, you know, sort of evening it out a little bit, it could be, yeah, it could be looking pretty good. I like the play that he, he went for the battle rage instead of a weapon, killing a minion, because he he knows that he needs just the card draw at some point, and this is the best turn because there's no much pressure on the board to play the battle rage right now. Yeah, and also if you equip the war axe, then. He's almost certainly going to equip the Death Bite next turn anyway, so you just burn the section of that mm -hmm. card. Because you want the Whirlwind effect. You don't yeah. you don't care too much about the actual weapon attack. You know, you just want the Whirlwind effects because as we've seen, this aggro piling deck is built up of so many low attack minions that the, the, the effect is just huge. And talking of Whirlwind effects, uh, Unstable Ghoul is a pretty reasonable draw as well. So now we might actually see Fire War Axe Ghoul instead. There's, there's definitely a chance to just kill off the Juggler and then play the Ghoul. Yeah, that's actually... Really nice if you think about it. Uh, is it because you have Acolyte of Pain for next turn, and then you play Acolyte of Pain plus Ghoul, and you gain a lot of cards? Now the problem is that your opponent might have um, Divine Favor already in hand, and <laughs> you're kind of feeding him. Yeah. So. No oh man, just going for the steady shot. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, so fast from Tracky style. So when your opponent locks in a uh, Finley pick that quickly when they're playing an aggro deck, it's steady shot. They've not even All really looked at the other two. Or power because the other two suck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there is a Corcoran now. Which will help dealing with the 5-5 five five if you don't want to face tank it. Mm, that's interesting. But yeah, this There's is no execute, unfortunately, for the Fisher because then you could have attacked into the Hunted Creeper, killed the spawns from the Hunted Creeper because the Death Rattle effect from the Death Spider was spawned later, right? Uh, but now he still will have free attack on board, which will kill 
the Frontic Berserker, so he's pushed to use the uh, the Unstable Bull this turn as well, he, well. He could have just played Corcoran, right? Like, just use Corcoran to attack in the 5-5 five five and then attack in the Spider, and only Finley was, uh, would survive. That's but then true. he's... Uh, he will be one mana float, so he wouldn't be able to do anything else, yeah, and which also is the issue. with no board, right? Yeah. This is kind of nice, though, because what he's done is he's guarding his Berserker, but also his, his Berserker's hitting for eight. So, uh, yeah. you know, that suddenly the aggro deck needs to deal with this one minion that's going to prove a huge issue because he can't really get through it now and he's got really got to rely on this Divine Favor doing some work here. And Cockhammer is probably Do as good as he was going to get. Does it save fit this situation? Can you actually kill... Well, you sacrifice one minion now. Attack. Oh, well, it oh. depends where the Cockhammer lands, Yeah, right? exactly. If it lands on the Spider, you're good. Because yeah. then you attack with one minion, attack with the Cockhammer, and the then... The Finley and the s Divine Shield yeah, and yeah, Spider yeah. survive that you then run into the the uh, the Berserker. It's the only real play, actually. Like, anything else just isn't good enough, and... You, that you can attack first. Yeah, yeah, attack first. To have 50... No, but uh, we probably not. Like, you don't want to have 50%. You want to have 33% that it lands on the Spider. Oh, yeah, because you actually need it on the Spider, don't you? Yeah, exactly. If it lands on, on Finley, it doesn't save you. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, so maybe he found. Oh, is he gonna face tag it? No, he's just gonna ignore it and let the taunt run into it. Okay, Ooh. sure. No, no he's no, actually. No, no. He's wow, that was Whoa. 15 damage to the face. Unnecessary 15 damage. So he basically didn't see that play, but yep. it's it's easy to see it from our perspective where we're chilled on the couch, and uh, he's yeah, we're, we're coming back tomorrow no matter what. We yeah. we, we, <laughs> hope, we we hope actually. <laughs> we, make, we make the finals easily. Yeah. Yeah, the power just of wanted frosting. to point it out, <laughs> you know. He just didn't see the correct sequence, but uh, you know, this is probably his first um, moment where he is on the screen, on the big screen, in those noise cancellation headphones. Definitely stressed. Yeah, and this is. Arcane Golem though coming down now for some extra damage and he does have uh, what so five six seven. so next turn he has how much damage six right nine ten eleven that's thirteen damage next turn which is actually pretty no way of armoring up uh, past the two armor from his hero power um, and no way to taunt you know <laughs> this he can still top the rough. oh no he's got the weapon right of course yeah. I, oh, uh, that's why you probably. So how much? You have the mini bot. Uh, yeah. So you I have suppose you two off lethal though. How much damage was it? Five, thirteen, right? Okay. Yeah, you two off lethal if you're hero power. So I, I like face. You just go. Um, you either top deck Grom or I win. Armor Smiths. So he knows there's not going to be any like big whirlwind effects mm -hmm, going mm -hmm. on. So I, I really like this play actually. It's, it's making the warrior require one card to win. And, and that's it. Yeah, so Warrior doesn't have that card. Now, how can Warrior... Golem, you're staring at 5 damage. So, you, so 4 damage is coming somewhere. Hmm. What are you looking for? Belcher? We probably need uh, a Belcher or a... Uh, is it Dread Corsair? Um, if he runs them, but we've not seen anything so far. So I think this is actually just game with that Leroy Blessed of Might. This is just ultimate BM. It's like, so I can take that 50 damage. Yeah, it's fine. As long Those errors on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> <laughs> like with the tag with Leperno, because he knew... Exactly, he it's fine. Of it's fine. <laughs> okay, then. Sounds good. And this is the power of Finley getting Hunter Hero power. Because I think that's done 4 to 6 damage in this match. Hero power, and with Leroy Blessing of Might... That's all you need. Well, that's, that's more than enough. That's pretty good yeah. Paladin deck. Uh, right now going to zero, and Fischer is down to his. I think the Paladin has a pretty good matchup. The Druid, as long as it starts quickly, of course, which is the same of any aggro yeah. deck you want to talk mm -hmm. about. But um, because it's almost certainly running owls, you kind of just do the thing of by the time you hit turn five, hopefully, you get Druid. Problem. Uh, your divine favors might probably burn no real value because when 
spam my innervates, empty my hand, use the Ancient of Laws most likely to heal myself when I get the advantage of using the innervates anyway, because the board should be clear, unless I'm really digging for a for the card draw. Yeah. Right? But sometimes you don't have the opportunity, uh, even if you really want to. Like you, you just don't have the innervates. You have other Drake in your hand, and you're like, oh, yep. I just need to play what I have, right? But the problem th that's like the general problem of Druid, right? You don't yeah. have yep. innervates. <laughs> Why is this game cheating? Not letting me have my ramp. Yeah, and even though he will not be able to use divine favor, possibly uh, divine shield will be really good, especially when you just go with um, blessing of kings and a divine shield shield. So I wonder yeah. if he plays keepers. Like we haven't seen keepers yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, keeper of all the man. Okay. Yeah, no <laughs> keeper of the ground. <laughs> One of those uh, picks, you know, it's a flex pick, man. Anything you don't really want those silences or anything. It's fine. I, I thought it's also included <laughs> in every druid. Like just start. Also included right. in druid. Twenty-two, actually twenty. Yeah, it's two innervates, <laughs> two one less. groves. Two keeper of the groves, two force of nature. And then you fill it, you know, with curve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and just fill it with Dr. whatever. Well. <laughs> yeah. And and two ancient of laws. Yep. Yes. So twelve cards. A lot of wiggle room for deck builders. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that's a good opening hand, I guess. Um shoot the mini bot with yeah. a A nice negative spin on that there, Lother. <laughs> uh, basically, he's just going to oppress him, and uh, yeah. and he's going to take the game. Oh, Living Roots is actually That's pretty huge, bad. though. Wrath and Shade of Nextramas, but this is not the dream opening. This is not innervating the Keeper to stop aggression and then just be aggressive yourself, because what he has to do is literally just race. Yeah, definitely. He has, he has to just, just lock the board down, and if the piling doesn't... work and just slow him down. It's similar to the way the Druid versus Shaman match up. Sometimes the Druid just puts big minions on the board and there's not a lot you can do about just it. Just don't have it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, trade one in and then Wrath down. I think over time it's a bit better for him. Uh, if it's just weird because he's wild growth and into nothing, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's my own, the only confusion because he could have gone Wrath into Shade and now if he plays Shade then the Wrath's still not being used and he's not on anything on Force. So what do you get the long run? He'll be able to get the force, uh, force nature on five. Turn five, yeah. Game. I guess you just knock the shield off, right? Yeah. Shields. What's going to come down next turn? And the answer to that is blessing of kings <laughs> on him. The issue, like, if the paladin starts quick enough. The druid can on, no, normally only drop like one minion at a time, and then you just have all these buff cards, and you know just deal with it, and then carry on. Even two abusive sergeants w would still do the same job. W that's why would it be game changing here? Probably just ending the game right right away, right? But uh, right now, the double abusive sergeant will cost will cost the future dearly. Renom, just deal with, with the minion, the huge taunter. Get the damage to the face anyway, then you use the 1-1 one, one to clear the free one. And you have such a bottom one, and you know that there's no sweat. You can even slam. Power is yeah, fine now. Right. Because Blessing's one mana, you can squeeze it in on almost any turn, right? Whereas, it, you know, if you only had one mana left, then sure, yeah, just play it. Would have done it that turn. Yeah, and you kind of do expect uh, the force of nature as well on turn six. Yeah, now like, oh wow, that's even better. But now he, he could have played Treader and Blessing of Might on the one one mm -hmm. just to push, but instead, be crazy. When you think about it, the chance of drawing a one one is is huge. I mean, a yeah. one mana minion. Yeah, because the deck is filled practically with those. Yeah. So, yeah, he did use a lot of them, but. Uh, Position. When you're using your removal against this Paladin deck on a minion that creates another minion when it dies, like you're really just fighting a losing battle. 
Yeah, he's oh, not, he's, he's going not face. He's not even clear. <laughs> now a top deck swipe. No, but it does help. Yeah, this is gr actually great. He will be able to kill the free two and still like slam a five five, or actually even maybe kill the four one. Hmm. You don't have to heal with any. I play. But the problem is, every single turn, Fishu obviously doesn't have much choice, but leaves minions up. You're just afraid of buffs. Obviously, we can see the hand is buffs in, uh, yep. in track styles, but might. You know what else is there? In that's something else as well. <laughs> oh man. Well, but I still think, I think that you blessing of kings, blessing of might, hero power instead. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This, why not just? AoEs that come down, you know, the, the Arcane Golem's going to suffer, whereas you wait for... So. Nah, I don't, I don't like this, to be honest. You build more board presence by playing the hero power, and you're not giving your opponent the one mana, right? Yeah, because now the problem is, is it's very likely that the Black... You know, he might have, like, you know, spell powers, like, Drake into Swipe or he something like that. He does have Savage Roar, actually, to clear. Oh, actually, even the Keeper is better. If only had two Keepers to silence and do the two but damage. Look at this now. Ho Ar 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 Arjun Horse Rider. He's Leroy, Leroy or, Jennings, Arcan or, Ar or second Arcan Golem. Th I don't think he plays actually two because he plays Leroy, right? Yeah. So one L Leroy, one Arcan Golem, and that's basically it. I think the weird thing as well is, like, It's not like, well, no, I want like six damage this turn to then stack six damage next turn. Over mm -hmm. the course of two turns, it would only be a two damage difference. So this is a pretty good play, putting okay. the keep on the board there. Not taking any damage to himself, which is key. Or, Leroy. Or are we just going to see a Leroy finish? <laughs> oh, that's actually man. not bad. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Getting that's the hero power off as well. Bad. Is this, this going to be a shot? snap? Oh, oh, of course it's Hunter. good about Finley as well is just on board, at, like looking at it right now, it you can't die. kill both minions. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's you can't. Awesome. So suddenly, Bless the Might's a card. You definitely don't play it this turn, though. Yeah. Oh, now okay. he can. <laughs> uh, there is still two damage in Kami. Imagine if he had Arcane Golem. Like, he, awesome. he'd be on seven, but he'd still win with the hero yeah. power as well yeah. from the Hunter. Punished! Let's see. <laughs> Possibly. Leopard okay, that's still good. That's, that's two more damage! Good. It's another, another hero power. It's not so like you're afraid of combo at the moment yeah. from Druid or anything, so... Oh, look at that. Uh, well, that's still... You can survive one more turn, right? Yeah. Based can on what the power Can he draws. win with a combo next turn? So if he attacks for two here, the combo would be 14 plus uh, 8, 22. Actually, was there a reason to ignore the Lepinome there? No, Probably not, not with buffs, not with buffs. Yo, no. guys, force, force of Nature wins, right? Yes, it's exactly 22. Oh. And that's enough. That's one damage. Yeah. That's the one damage that was wow. needed for Trekkie style to advance to day two because... All oh, oh, right, I need to move. Um, <laughs> Because th this was the match, the decider match for both of those players to advance to day two. So, uh, so the yeah. Fischer will not advance. The Fischer ends up the tournament with two free score. He did really well qualifying. So, mm -hmm. like, even though it's a loss and the guys don't get to day two, you still have to give it to them. Like, they did really well uh, being here and uh, actually playing in the tournament. Yeah, oh, the, of course. The, the performance, ju just qualifying, you know, like there was uh, 428 man brackets. And I know for a fact there were a lot of pro players in those brackets that signed up to play in those. So just qualifying through that is pretty big. And then doing pretty well in Swiss as well, you know, being literally playing to the last game of the, uh, the last round, uh, being able to like, you know, whether you threw or not, like r really good effort overall. Sure, sure. Oh, by the way, I think the, the other match has finished as well. Uh, we had a backup match for you guys, but uh, everybody's playing super fast and uh, wants to close the day. But uh, that was a really fast match. And do you guys think the aggro m lineup was the lineup to bring to this kind of a Swiss tournament? Uh, I think maybe not aggro decks, like pure aggro decks, although I'm being proved wrong, right? Because <laughs> it's 3 0 against a decent player and a decent lineup, so just smashed. Um, his opponent, uh, but that—that's the 
that's the thing about aggro decks. That's the thing about what we talked about in the, in the beginning of the broadcast today, right? Aggro decks can always win. Always. Whatever your opponent will be doing, whatever deck he will be playing, he can always win, even if he's targeting aggro decks. Yeah. Right? So, bringing aggro decks is always a good idea, but it does limit kind of uh, your, your options and possibilities of the matchups, right? So, people are usually, if, if they're going for an aggro lineup, they're kind of leaning forward to a mid range. Um, mid-range options like yeah, the Druid, like the Zoo. Right? One of the issues as well is if you, in Last Hero Standing specifically, if you do your whole lineup very similar, then you can get locked out by a deck like pr pretty hard. Say like, you know, a Control Warrior can actually just uh, can just crush through a, f a full aggro lineup or something, you know, maybe Priest or something like that. So it's definitely yep. a bit scary to go all in, whereas, you know, not as not as punished in, in Conquest because once you've won, you've won or once you've lost, they can't play it again. Um, but I uh, really like the uh, pile in there. Most damage in one game, 13. What? That's... One turn. Oh, one turn. One turn. Yep. There we go. Okay. And win, with, win, win the with the coin, 67%. Wow. Oh, that's something we argued about at the very beginning of Hearthstone. A lot of players said that when you get a coin, you actually win more. And then uh, Blizzard was saying that's actually equal. Yeah, but it was a huge variance, right? Like thousands of games yeah. gathered by Blizzard when we have a small pool of games. So I'm not surprised that there's a margin for the coin. It might be margin for the starting player as well. M could have been the other way around because the aggro players would have been starting, right? Yeah, it depends uh, on the decks as well, right? Yeah. Like the if aggro player wants rogue, to. If you play rogue, you always want the coin. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That was crazy as well. It just showed the um, the least turns in a match was 16. The most turns in a match was 19. Interesting. So that's actually only the free turn this Yeah, disparity? yeah that, that's, for, that's for this match. So oh, for this it match, just shows yeah. how consistent oh, the okay. Paladin was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of just like, he just killed him every so single th time. Those are not global stats for the tournament. Those stats I think it was just for, for, this th for this match, yeah. No, I get it. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Based on those we, went <laughs> we went a bit deep into that one then. Yeah. But yeah, it's clarified. It was it just took that some match. Time, yeah. But yeah. We got there. Clever cast is 140 IQ. Yeah. So guys, just to review the day, we've seen a lot. We've seen an aggro finish. We've seen Lothar battling versus a Twitch as representative. Yeah. Doing really sure. well and finishing in top two. Uh, then we've seen uh, a lot of players bringing control decks. We Reno Lock, Control Warrior. Um, what was the the favorite deck for you guys? Lothar first. Uh, to be honest, there was no nothing new because we are now we are, we are we are we are at the end of the meta game. So I don't predict anyone will be bringing something really interesting and new. Uh, but I guess that the combo locks with Reno Jackson and the Arkham Golems are something that is a pleasure to watch because almost every single game is different till almost the end because you, you finish them off with the combo. But in the beginning, there's a lot of struggle which cards to play. You can you always have some different type of one-offs. So it's a very like decision-heavy deck, right? Yeah. Because like there are some decks that it's not saying that you don't have to make hard decisions, but decisions are probably more clear in terms of what you take. Whereas with uh, a deck like Reno Lock, yeah. you've got to just work, because you only run one-offs, you've got to work with what you've got. And that, like you said, looks different almost every single game. Yep. Yeah, like Caster's just looking at the screen as, hmm. <laughs> what can he do here? He can do everything. Oh, I guess Refreshment Vendor was an okay <laughs> play. <laughs> Give him a card. <laughs> Give him the card. Raven, favorite deck? Um, not just because it just 3-0'd, but the Aggro Paladin I like seeing. Uh, I played that deck quite a lot. Uh, nice comeback. Uh, <laughs> a, a, a little while ago. And um, it's a really good deck, really fun. And I just, I kind of just like seeing it when everyone's so in the mindset of, oh, Secret Paladin is the only... You mm -hmm. know, like just the Paladin deck. And it just shown that, you know, Agro Paladin can do some work. And uh, he's actually gone through to the next day. So it's not just this one set. It's actually put in some wins, probably. Well, three. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure, right? But look, you know what I mean, guys. Those wins did count. Yes, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> for me, I think um, I really enjoy look, uh, watching the, the new Zoo version with the Sea Giants. Well, it's not that new, but it's, it's new in the European and NA meta game where you have the Sea Giants, where you have Enhanced Meccano. And even though it's not stable, as Lothar mentioned before, I also agree it's not that stable as the mm -hmm. old version. It's a lot of fun to watch and to interact because if Dex is not stable, how do you play it in a good way to actually win a match? So that was a lot of fun yeah. from my perspective. But uh, now we are ready to go into a short break before the round finishes. This is the round five of Swiss, $20,000 prize pool overall. Top 16 after this round will advance. Some players are actually still playing. Uh, because this match was was just a breeze. Uh, it was so fast. So we'll finish all the matches and then we'll come back to you with the final standings and announce the top 16 players who advanced today too. But for now, stay tuned for more Hearthstone.
after the short break.